Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of uh, Fed World. So uh, this is the entrepreneur edition, you know, as we've done before. And we actually got a we got a special guest in the building today, man. Uh, actually, his building, uh, to say the least. But uh, so I actually met Donnie because he he went ahead and he went ahead and rented one of my vehicles. And that day, I wasn't even supposed to deliver to him that day. I actually had a couple of my other drivers that were going to deliver, but I ended up having to do it because they were busy. So ended up being a great thing. Ended up being great because I actually got to speak to him right in front of his store, the Drunken Burger, um, as you guys will you'll figure out. But I actually got to speak to him right in front of his store, and I seen just how passionate he was about his business and things that he had coming up and things of that nature. And I was like, man, that's it's an interesting story. And yesterday I actually had uh, one of his burgers, his signature burger, the drunken burger, um, exceptional burger, really loved it. G and myself had it. It was great. Um, we actually sat down and even today, right after this, we're going to have another one because we loved it that much. So it was awesome. But um, without further ado, man, here's, uh, here's Donnie. What's up, Donnie? Not too much, man. <laughs> How's your uh, day going? Good, man. I'm very, uh, I appreciate, you know, you guys putting us out there. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Yeah, so, so, um, where, where, like, what were you doing before you opened up the Drunken Bird? So, this was, this whole concept, this is a COVID-driven concept. Um, I went to FAU uh, here in Boca. Um, I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. Um, so FAU is a smaller school. Um, I bartended right next door. So I'm at O'Brien's Irish Pub. Um, and um, after school, I was in finance. I was a stock worker for a while. Uh, then went into insurance. COVID hit. And I saw a uh, an opportunity for uh, for delivery fee, really. Yep. Uh, coming from Tallahassee, I think I excel pretty well at know or at least know what uh what needs to be done for especially late night delivery and that wasn't me and done here in boca um and this was a very very good opportunity uh especially working with brian stuff like that yep um i just took a chance thought i could do it who's brian for brian's uh so brian owns a brian's irish pub okay his wife they also own this before this was called the downtown grill uh, two different LLCs because you, you used to be able to smoke in O'Brien's. So he bought the restaurant next door, really for storage, but we cook next door and make the food for O'Brien's. That's why I was shooting for companies. COVID happened. I'm, I was tired of, you know, tucking in my shirt every day um, and working like that. And uh, I just saw no one was really delivering food. Uh, and I, ghost kitchens were. I've heard about ghost kitchens when I was in New York and stuff like that. Um, but also I just really knew there was no, a late night to live. There was nothing after 10 o'clock unless you're going to get like a, um, a national competitor, Wawa, Burge, Donald's, they know something like that. Um, and, you bet. and, um, I took a chance and, um, started off, I actually started off first with a company called the Boca Raton Flapper Company. Um, Basically, what I did was I took O'Brien's just a minute because I, I gutted this whole place. Um, and, you know, my partnership with Brian O'Brien's is, you know, I still have to cook, cater to their food, which no brainer. I still have to do that. You know? Yep. Uh, you know, they have a good amount of business and, you know, it's more for traffic for me. Um, so, you know, Boca is very fancy, I guess. And like, I, I'm a regular pizza kind of guy. The O'Brien's are a little kind of girly to me but i know people like that <laughs> yeah. and you don't have to be a genius to make really can't fuck them up so i was like all right let's do like you know 10 specialty flatbreads put them at the top of the o'brien's menu alter the you know change the names of you know different products take off shepherd's pie take off you know stuff like that and see how it goes yeah did you know day one sort of kind of working um i i only did uber um that's the platform i used um because I didn't have a website, and I'm by myself. I have no time for anything, really. So, you know, Uber was my marketing website. Uber was my website. You know, Uber and Google. 
once I started like hitting up to like 500 bucks a day, which 500 bucks a day is not a lot, but I mean, you do that daily, man. That started out. Adds up. Yep. 500 bucks a day is pretty cool. But what really got me interested, what really made me go into this full throttle was once I started seeing like repeat customers. Once I started seeing a customer, I remember the first guy was George. He ordered for the 32nd time in six weeks. A guy orders 30 sec, like 32 times for, for me, you now have a business. I was like, fuck. Can I cut some of this? Is it bad to curse or no? Oh, you can. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, I have a really bad mouth. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so I was like, man, let's let's capitalize this. Like, I'm from Tallahassee. I know what what's not here and what could be here. Especially FAU is one of the fastest growing universities, you know, here in Boca. Um, we're in the most lucrative spot in Florida, you know, one of them. Uh, let's alter the menu. Let's take off the flatbreads. And now let's do another ghost kitchen. Let's do the drunken burger. At the time, I just wanted to piss off my girlfriend and I wanted to name it Burger <laughs> Big Titty. So I named them Cheeseburger Big Titty. <laughs> Called the place a drunken burger. I was <laughs> shocked that the name was, you know, available. Uh, and I just wanted to name Burger the Big Titty. Drunken Burger exploded. Like I remember our first uh, first night we first night we did like three hundred bucks, but by the end of the week we did like fifteen hundred dollars on like the, the the first Friday of the week. Wow, uh huh. Fifteen hundred dollars, one platform, don't have a website. That's fucking great. Yeah, I was like, all right, let's really focus on our packaging. Let's focus on like the retention of these customers. That I did. It. I kept going. I was like, man. After 10 o'clock, you know, I'm on Uber. Where do I get a taco? Either Wawa or the other national competitor, Taco Bell. So let's do Taco Mama. Hired a guy named Poncho. Uh, me and him kicked it off. And we started Taco Mama. I mean, and so it's just, uh, it was fun building stuff. Yeah. Now that's awesome. I mean, all I started. Oh no, no, it's, it's it's great. It's great. I seen from what I'm hearing, I I see that you adapted, learned, made changes where you needed yeah. to do, yeah. where you, where you need to make those changes, and I think that's fantastic. So there's a lot of failure too. I mean, don't get me wrong. Oh no, got sure. Fail. And like yeah. you know, I again, I'm new to this. Yep. Uh, you know, I I know good service. Um, I don't know shit about food service. Yeah. But I I I know like you know how to you know, present to a customer packaging at least to be, you know, adorable, presentable and consistent. Um, but, uh, I have failed a lot too, yeah. so, but it was good though. It's a bit, you know, we're in year two now, uh, but it was very, uh, interesting first year, uh, not dull. How important was the location to you? I was very fortunate because of Brian, uh, bartending next door for him, uh, working for him on and off for eight years. Um, the opportunity for him, for me to come in here for him, with him um, it's huge you can't beat this location yeah. we have the higher hotel I mean first off we're on federal and palmetto you know or Boca Raton for it you cannot beat this yeah. you have the Hyatt here you have you know Irish pub our foot traffic is everything uh, but again my whole point was not to do foot traffic yeah. it was strictly for delivery um, the foot traffic is great though because I rather people come in here. I rather you know you come grab your food personally and not use third party delivery service. Third party delivery service is just great brand building. Yep. Um, and that was a big learning lesson too because I was very uneducated about it, um, and now I'm very educated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But the location is great. So the location it, is everything. And that's what I'm you know, try, learning now is trying to expand different markets yeah so that's that's you know where we're at now in phase two yeah you did so you did mention your close attachment to this place because you used to come you used to come here back mm -hmm. when you were younger yeah so did that play that was a big part of you saying you know what i you know i so remember this location and i you know bartending here in college mm -hmm. going to college here i'll put it like in this irish pub like yeah. the, the irish pub is you know it's uh more of a blue collar small not as fancy bar that you know people associate Boca Raton with downtown Boca. Um, I mean, if you look at the corner next to him, he has an Italian restaurant and then there's a, a nightclub at the other end of the plaza. I'm in the exact middle. 
each of that Italian restaurant and that plaza for that um, club at the end of the plaza, they've changed owners about five to six different times mm. when I was in college. No one's ever catered to this market. Like, um, I used to, bartending here, growing up here, I used to, you know, there's, in front of this restaurant, there's five financial, major, five major financial institutions. There's, yep. a, there's a hotel. There's just so many businesses and, and uh, communities here that don't have proper delivery. And I, I knew I could capitalize on that. Yeah, um, sure. And I don't think anyone um, has a, the type of service that, um, that we clad for tennis with it. Yeah, it's awesome. And Donnie, I mean, that's great, but I know you, you also touched base on some of the challenges, you know, some of the failures. I think in business sometimes, you know, that's stuff that's not discussed because you only see kind of the end result. But uh, so what were some of the challenges that you ran into as you started well, this whole... We definitely have a lot of fuck-ups. Yeah. Um, but fuck-ups are good. Yeah. Uh, the one thing, biggest challenge I've had uh, is staffing. Um, it wasn't in the beginning, but in the be actually in the beginning, the, f the first challenge was uh, when the second part of COVID was the shortages of everything. Yep. The one thing that the reason why we keep having our repeat customers and our repeat orders is consistency. Our packaging, uh, our sauces, um, even from the to, the to go box, every little thing means they all mean the same to me. They all have to be the same. And so when 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 you're when Restaurant Depot is running out of to go boxes and from Miami to West Palm, it's a big issue. You know, when Arizona Ice Tea is my biggest ever uh, biggest seller, and you don't even have it in here right now because they're so out of shortages. It sucks, and you know, so um, that was the biggest thing is not having the majority of our menu available Man. Uh, weekly. And so, when stuff would come in, we literally bought a storage unit of just to go boxes. Like, when they got a shipment in, we would buy every single box we could, whatever. That's why I bought the four F350 because I had an eight foot bed. Yeah. So just just so I could not make four trips to Restaurant Depot, because yeah. I would have to get two employees and me to come bring your SUV, because I'd buy everything I can, just to have it in bulk, yeah. so we don't ever run out. Yeah. Because that was that was the worst. Um, is when you order something for the third time, you expect it to be like it was the first time. Yep. yep. And that's everything. To yeah. Me. And that's how it should be because I, like I like pride myself in being simple, but consistent. And if you can't do both, it's, it's not going to work. Yeah, it's not going to work out. Yeah. But then staffing, staffing was to, is where I'm had a huge cloud issue right now. Yeah. This area it's very hard, um, in this industry. Um, you know, I was too nice. I overpaid. Um, and there's not a lot of people in this industry in this area. So man. So who, who would who would you say, or is there any competitors you're fielding that you look at and say, this is my competition, or is it just, it's not really the case um, in this area? Or I mean, I see the I see competition. Um, I mean, I think there's roughly, I think there's 50 ghost kitchens. And if, I think there's 50 ghost kitchens open up a month uh, in, the, in a five-mile radius from me. Uh, with the amount of transactions we do, um, I think there's a couple, uh, but also we're a fast food restaurant with a basket size average forty two dollars. Yes, it's fucking great. That is. We awesome. started off at twenty two twenty two dollars, you know, per basket size. So in, in one year to get to forty two to double it. No, I, yeah, I couldn't ask for anything more. But I don't really worry about competition right now uh, because I'm scaled back so much right now because of staffing we're only using one delivery platform yeah so which is just uber i think right now no so i'm not even using oh you on I'm, I'm, right now i'm only using doordash uh, uh so you can deliver us order us from uh, doordash right now yeah uh, and then this week we'll go on to grub up and delivery goods uber will be at the end of the month out yeah uh, uber is my favorite they're also the most expensive and that's another thing shoot but another struggle 
I didn't realize how much I was spending uh, with Uber. Uber was costing me about a thousand bucks a day. Wow. Thousand bucks a day. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But also think about it too. I was getting, you know, hundred to 130 to 140 transactions a day. Yeah. Without a website, you know, with no marketing, with, without a sign. I mean, there's a printed street address on yep. the fucking window. Yeah. Um, was it worth it? The first year, I think absolutely. For so it got it got you exposure, hundred percent for sure. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's all I wanted. I didn't expect to make money. For I don't expect to make money until you know year three. Yeah. Uh, but if the brand builds, it's all the fuck I care about, man. Yeah. It's really cool to see. So you got a lot of inflation. I know it's trickling down to your bottom line. So oh, the, the fluctuation of price too. Yeah. For food products, Jesus Christ. I mean. Chicken, chicken went up. I mean, dude, you, yeah. You, you, today you cannot get chicken wings under like eighteen bucks anywhere, wow. yeah. and especially if you're ordering them online. Yeah. You're spending twenty two bucks for ten wings. That's fucking. And that's chicken. That's disgusting. Yeah. Where I come from, you should be slapped in the face. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's weird. Yeah. yeah. So it's so inflation. So you've had to probably pivot on how much you're ordering as well because inflation was on the yeah, rise. I've I've lost. Uh, vendors because of um, I couldn't afford ordering Trump like to ordering for them because of they needed so much for me to spend and when ground beef was going up you know, over three dollars a pound like yeah, yeah. You know? yes. so and then you had like so you had the shortage of, of staffing too and and we're just going over things like this because it's important for people to know and realize like yeah I know I, 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 love, I love to talk about the negative side of it yeah no I mean, uh, because the the brand did so well, or it is doing well. You know, we're you know we're we finally getting out of our little slump, and it was is the first slump we've ever had. I mean, our first year we just kept going up and up and up. Now, like, holy fuck, this is cool shit. Man. Um, you know, this is the first like you know it was a you know a bad summer, first real summer too, because you know everyone was closed last summer too for COVID and stuff. Uh, but not for it. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I learned it. I get, feel like, going through shit like that only makes me stronger. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we survived this so far. We're going to be fucking, we're going to have, we'll have three locations in the next two years. Wow. So, wow. That's awesome. Um, The fact that you could project that. And I want to touch base before I forget too. So you got a lot of people who are, you know, they're trying out different alternatives. They're turning vegan. They don't really want to deal with, you know, meat. Do you have a relationship with? So I do. I actually have a, uh, a vegan concept mm-hmm. that I have ready to go. I even have the 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 brand. The, I actually have it set up for Uber. I have the tablet and everything ready to go. Yeah. Because I don't have the proper staff back there, I don't want to order that food yet and have it get mixed up. Messed up again, consistency's everything. Yep. Um, for me to run six kitchens out of one kitchen and to have such a, a fluctuating staff, I can't. Yeah, I guess I don't trust it yet for that, and especially that market. You cannot pluck that up because yeah. you get remember when someone looks at Drunken Burger online, they never had us before. Online orders, you get one chance. For a customer, if you order and it's expensive, no matter what it is. So, if the, if you forget a sauce, if you make if you put the wrong cheese on it, if you fuck up any little aspect of their order because it's so expensive, because uh, sauces are two dollars and stuff like that, and they'll never ever ever come back again. Yep, yeah. that's the difference with online orders. Now, if me and you went to a bar and the bartender was a bitch because she didn't like you know someone. Maybe you'll go next time with, without me and you'll go somewhere else. You'll probably get one more shot, right? Yep. yep. But not with online orders. You're never going to get, you ordered a good burger from Drunken Burger, but you never got the good burger sauce. Fuck that place. Yeah. You know? Not to my reality. Yeah. That's, that's how I am. And so. So, so the customer retention is just, it's pretty much the most important it's thing. everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I t- I'll tell you what, one thing he's, one thing that I like that, you know, Donnie just said, and that we should focus on is the fact that he's not going to add a new service. Uh, he's not going to say, okay, I'm, I'm offering now vegan a vegan portion to the menu without actually making sure that he has 
It's processed down pack. He has the staffing to go along with it. And these are things that are important, you know, um, and he's making sure that he's he's you know, he's doing due diligence before he does it. So I think that's fantastic. Um, yeah. So I know you we spoke yesterday, too, which I found was impressive. The fact that you had all these tablets to make things so much efficient for you, just in case, you know, you you got a shortage of staff. Like, touch base on that. What so How'd that come along? The tablets, they're they're a lot. Uh, <laughs> it, it was organization is is not my uh, my thing. Yeah, but so for we we'll probably have like thirty two tablets total when we're all up and running. In order for it to work properly in the kitchen, remember there's six different kitchens that are, you know, when it's all up and running. No. You have to have six different packaging. If it was all in the same packaging, this concept this does not work at all. Yeah. That's the whole point of the ghost kitchen. Uh and the food ops has to be really fucking good. Cool. Um so for each te- each restaurant you have a tablet for grub up, DoorDash, delivery dudes. Uh, you know, slice like Drunken Burger is the only I think a uh, non pizza restaurant on yeah. the slice platform. Um, but uh, it's it's very uh, I wouldn't even say like I'm trying to think of the the word for it. I don't. You got you have to pay the person that handles the tablets. It it's a lot of work. Yeah, for sure. Right. Uh, I don't know if that's what you're asking for, but no, I get it. I, and I was just, I was amazed of how you're using technology to so make it yourself more, more technology. That's what that's okay. That's where I was going. Yeah. We are more of a technology company. It feels like that. Yeah. I mean, that's what I've, I spend most of my day going through the technology side. That's why the basket size has increased also. Like how the art of you scrolling through an app, I think about the average guy of what I want to see, the verbiage you use, the picture you have is everything. Because in my opinion, you're going to buy one product within six clicks of your phone. That's the average. That's what I realized when I was drunk or when I was sober. You want very, very easy, accessible, but secure because it's through your phone and uh, you trust it through your phone. That's why no one will ever call us or go to the car with their girlfriend's card, grab their credit card. They don't want to do that. They trust the, what's their credit card that's already saved in their phone. Um, and it is very, very, very uh, more technical than you think. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but f- yeah, from that, from the additions uh, for, you know, how you, how you word your additions. Uh, uh, it's like when you go to Twin Peaks, when the girl asks you, do you want to man, man size your beer? I'm pretty sure 90% of guys are going to be like, yeah. You know, because you don't want to say no to the hot girl, you know, right there in front of you. That's true, right? <laughs> so what, when you want to man up your double, your double cheese, your burger, uh, a it's funny, and you're gonna, you can clink it. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. But unless you don't like cheese, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was very, it's very cool to see that that work, and uh, it's a lot too to go yeah. through that because you have to go through. It's a lot. It's a lot of work, man. And that's why, again, hiring. I've been looking for someone to help me on that side um, to do this because I've really only been able to focus with the Drunken Burger. That's why it's the most popular of all the fucking companies. Yeah. That's what sucks because in my opinion, I think Soup Boys is the number one, will be the number one out of them all. Uh, why do you say that? I think, I'll put it this way. So when I, so when I started Soup Boys last July, I was doing about $300 a day in soup. $300 a day in soup in July in fucking Boca Raton it's that hot yeah, it's this that is hot. a company yeah. why soups are adorable people in all these offices around here they like you know they want something kind of healthy yeah. it's homemade um, salad you know so we, and we did like salads around so on that menu um, it's just a more uh, wide base I would assume margins are better a shit ton better in right. a shit ton better yeah no. And I fucking love soups. That's true. <laughs> no, I like soups more than work. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the technical, the technology side is honestly what excites me too. Yeah. 
Um, and it's, it's, that's what was really cool to see. And I'm still learning. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of like Adobe Photoshop. You're never going to learn the whole, the whole system. No. Nah. You're always going to keep learning. And that's what I like about it. Um, and that's why I really enjoy this industry. I mean, it's tough as fuck. Yeah. And it is hard. Yeah. But it's cool to see something built. And I know this will work. For yeah. sure. How, now you got, let's say you got 10 items on a menu. And how do you decipher what stays on there? Does anything come off? Do you keep, like for instance, I love the drunken burger, but is that the most popular item? No. So the most popular burger, I think, is the tomahawk. Um, our sh our head chef, I remember we had, he hated making salads, and I get it. Like we're still, you know we're doing 150 orders a night. Uh, you know there's we have a small kitchen. You yeah. know we're we're not like a big. I want people to know like we have like a four stove burner. We have you know two uh, pizza ovens, um, which are like eight inches wide. Um, like, we have a very small setup. When he said he didn't want to make salads, and, like, for a cop salad, you, you know, I got to do the avocado, the blue cheese, and you know, presentations, everything. Yep. If you do not make it the way the, the picture is, I'm not going to fucking deliver it. You know what I mean? Uh, and you're going to remake it. I, okay, I'll do this. I'll jack it up, like, four to five bucks. You know, no one should pay... I don't think you should pay $17 for a cop salad. We never sold more cop salads ever after we jacked the price up. It's fucking weird. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? So, but uh, no, I do. I look at, at the end of every week. I look at uh, what's trending, what's not. Yeah. And if something's, if something hasn't been ordered, like I did put Shepherd's Pie on the order because, you know, we do cater to O'Brien's Irish pub. Okay. We, we make uh, their, their food. Uh, but when I realized no one was ordering it, I took it off the bay. No, yeah. uh, and if it's a, like I, we have breakfast at the heat shop um, okay I had breakfast on the jumbo burger menu <laughs> excuse me um, at late night we were selling a shit ton of breakfast items French toast sticks are the number one seller it's just too much it ruins all the oil it's too much of a pain in the ass so I took those off no. uh, and it just wasn't worth it price wise to do that so labor cost included, it just yeah. didn't add up to make sense. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Man, that's that's all. So I yesterday we went and seen the the is there a name for that truck? <laughs> so I call it I call I call it Clifford. Like the Clifford. It hey, yeah, now nah, it actually reminds me. Yeah. 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 Think so. yeah. G G has to put that picture up. G definitely put that yeah. picture up. The it's it's a cool it's a cool ass truck. I love it. Like yeah. once a week. But well, we have, we have. I'll get pictures of people sending me, like, girls will be laying on the hay. Yeah, yeah. We nah, it's an awesome truck, man. How? Yeah. And you were telling me how big of an advertising tool it's, you were able to use. So before. the guy that did our countertop in here, it's, um, you know, it's a fake marble in here. It looks, you know, very presentable. Um, something happened. He, had, like, had a fire, so they, you know, sale his truck. And he was like, I really don't want to sell it. I was like, dude, if anyone's going to take care of it, it's me. Like, I fucking love that truck. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he literally cried to me when he gave it, like, such a steal. Yeah. The price. Before I even had got it registered, I got Drunkenberger plastered all over it. Yeah. The guy that did our windows, or our sister restaurant. Yeah. And uh, I don't have a sign. I, said, I still don't have a sign. It's very, city of Boca Raton is pretty tough. Uh, oh, just to get yeah, everything. Yeah, they don't want. No. I mean, so you also have to understand we're running technically seven different restaurants out of here. So I have to go through seven different processes mm. with the city. Uh, if I'm going to put any kind of name on our window. So best sign, how about a f big red F-350 that just says drunk a burger and I just park it right in front of the And they can't say nothing. Nope. <laughs> Creative. Uh, yeah, I mean... A big, you know, rugged truck in Boca Raton sticks out. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's I, we loved it. You know, G and I was it was right. all over it. I'm about yeah. to make it. I'm going to turn it into a sleigh. So we're going to do like a sleigh ride. We'll put a fake scene in it and yeah. like go around Meisner Park once, like once a night. Yeah, that has, nah, that's cool. Um, but it's it's a great marketing tool. Yeah, and I love big trucks. So, yeah, and it seems so like so relaxed and chilled over here. Have you seen anything? Tell me, 
you see anything funny, anything interesting that happened that made you say, what the heck just happened? In this area? Yeah. Every fucking night. Every night? Yeah, I mean, we've never... Give us one. <laughs> um, I don't, I've seen it all. <laughs> I mean, I've seen good and bad. I, I've, I've seen a couple have sex in that bush. Oh, <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm telling you, I've, I've seen it all. I mean, we're... <laughs> I don't know if they came from the Hyatt or what, but um, I've seen it all here. Yeah. Okay, that's that's cool, man. Um, yeah, I was just trying to get some stories out of them, you know, make this even better. But um, yeah. So, what do you? What are you? If you you could estimate, what are you bringing in annually? I mean, for something like this, for the all the concepts. I mean, so you got drunken burgers, soup boys, <laughs> um. I don't know if the Irish pub is included in your numbers. No, so not I, necessarily. I, I only get a percentage of the Irish, Irish pub. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll, I'll do, I'll give you this. Last year, I, I don't have this year's numbers. Yeah. Um, but I mean, well. Could be a ballpark. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just an estimate. Three weeks we'll have this year's numbers. Yeah. Um, but Uber, Uber gave me the numbers. So like when I took, when I took Uber off, when we went off platform with Uber, they uh, reached out to me. They sent me a 10 page uh, PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. For Uber, send me a 10 page PowerPoint. I'm like, damn. I know they don't need us, but they kind of wanted us in this area for sure. No. Uber is so big. They have so much fucking money. I know I'm nothing to them. And they can. They, they say that in this presentation, actually. But <laughs> the cool thing that they showed me was my, my analytics. The analytics I, they provide is everything. And that's why I like Uber so much. Yep. The, the science of the online ordering through Uber is very, very, very educational. Um, and I learned so fucking much. But Drunken Burger on just Uber last year did almost nine hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Just on Uber. Just on Uber. That's incredible. I granted it's gross, but like Yeah. But for one one platform, one of our brands, no website, no sign. That's strictly just Uber's platform, our location, and our 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 brand. That's yeah. It. That's all it is. No. That's incredible. But I'm I care like in like when I when I go on Uber, it takes me about six to seven different pictures for me to go and I do this on the phone with them. Uh, I care about how my picture looks. Like when you're scrolling, I want to make sure our picture stands out. Like I want it like for Drunken Burger, I wanted to make sure we had a hot red background. I wanted you to see a glass coke bottle, a pop rock, you know, uh, a ring pop. I'm sorry, pop rocks. I wanted you to see ring pop. I want you to see like retro fun. What the fuck was that? I want you to say that literally yeah. mentally when you scroll through it. You know what I mean? Um, so. Yeah, 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 that's cool, man. So what would someone, let's say, if someone's ordering from Drunken Burger or the Soup Boys, what should they expect? What, you know, what are you, pro- what are you going to provide for them every time? They order your food, what are you, you're, what do you provide? You're gonna pro- you. We, you're going to get the best, best packaging for us. Uh, when I say the best, I mean, I, I say it a lot, but like I have all girls in my family, adorable. And I like, I want to, I'm going to pretend that I'm sending this to my grandma. Yep. You're going to get a napkin, you know, five piece color, set, salt, pepper. But I know that sounds normal, um, but it's, it, it's a lot. It, it's, what they expect, a, you know, a, a dum dum, a lollipop, a piece of candy, a wet nap, a little Tabasco sauce. No, you may not even use it, but at some point you may actually mean. But you remember that people at the restaurant give us like a, that adorable little Tabasco sauce? No. Yeah, that's what I want people to remember, and you're gonna get that every single time. Yeah. Um, then, you know, I, our food is not fancy. Uh, it's very simple, um, but it's good and consistent. Yeah. And I see that you, it's fresh. Yeah. It's prepared. I mean, how important was that? Yeah, it's delivered every other day. Uh, <laughs> our meat is delivered every other day. Uh, I mean, when we're in season, we're getting meat every day. We're fully staffed for getting meat every day. Um, but you, gotta, you have to have good bread, good meat. Yes. Yeah. Adorable. 
Yeah. And our produce comes every day. And now, so then because we run so many different concepts, there's no waste. Like when we, so when we're cutting off, you know, chicken, like the fat, stuff like that, where do you think that fat's going? It's going to our chicken stock for the soups. Yeah. So like not like nothing's getting getting wasted, uh, which is, you know, good. Uh, but yeah, packaging's everything, man. It, the way it's delivered. Um, you kind of have to, I, for, I plan on the delivery driver being 20 minutes late. So the food's going to be cold. It's going to fuck up the order. It's going to be shaking around. Nope. So those little, like that little bag of the Tabasco sauce, the glass ketchup, the dumb dumb, the wet nap. When you get pissed off because they messed up your food and it's all shaken up and your girlfriend's like, Oh, how adorable is that little ketchup? Or, you know, your kid, you're giving dumb dumb to your kid. That, those little things stop a bad idea. Mind. Yep. Uh, so you may be pissed off. Your food got fucked up. It was cold. It was late. I can't control that. Who gets a bad review? For me, every time. But those little extra um, accoutrements, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that those stop a bad review, and mm-hmm. that's everything. Because I don't want the bad reviews. And I reply. I I replied to a lot of bad reviews, and I have some of my best customers because I replied to bad reviews. Yep. Uh, uh, so yeah. so that's important. You yeah. gotta, you gotta at least try to, you know, fix it, and a, a response actually helps, especially from the man himself. Oh, dude, I'll, I'll personally deliver it. I did it. <laughs> I first had review. I delivered it right to the, these, this dentist office. They were fucking rude as hell. To them. Yeah, but you I did delivered, it. I delivered to them personally once a week, every, yeah. every week now. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually what business comes with. <laughs> Deliveries <laughs> just like that, like personally, I you know. It. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. So we came in here. We drank your water. Who, who else drank your water? G drank your water. <laughs> so we drank your water. We, we're going to definitely order some food before we leave. We can't do that. And we'll be back also. But what's next for Don? Like, what's next? What's what's coming up? So or, we're going to do um, two locations. We have a two location um, expansion. I'm testing out some gas station kitchens. Um, the reason is, especially because of COVID, there's multiple gas stations t- everywhere, actually, that just have empty kitchens, um, mainly because of COVID. Yep. This is a good test market uh, for me. I get tested out. Uh, I rent it for a month, seeing you know, how the... I'm in such a prime location, and I want to move this to Jupiter. I want to move this to you know, different places. Wow. Um, so I'm going to try uh, West Palm Jupiter. Um, those markets work, you know, this brand, the, you know, this like truck and burger soup boys, this, you know, this isn't done in Naples, Florida. This isn't done in St. August, you know, where they have, you know, smaller colleges and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the pe- people said this couldn't be done in Boca either. There's too many old people. And then uh, shut the fuck up. These people are ordering like crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, and it's also funny to hear like a 65 year old lady order a big titty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care how old people are. They want, they, they like the menu. They like the aggressiveness and you know, it's different. Um, and so, yeah, expansion group. And uh, inch our way north. That's awesome. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So what, you got a timeline for that or is it kind of just, you know, uh, on March. About March? About March. Yeah. Uh, for sure. So we may, you guys may see a part two. Us and us and Donnie for yeah, sure, just to catch up with them. Nice. Definitely for sure, we definitely want to do that. So, Donnie, uh, how could they reach you? Um, where so, can they find you? We are at six one Southeast First Avenue, no. uh, Boca Raton, Florida, on Federal Palmetto, right next to the Hyatt. Um, our phone number is five six one four one nine eight two eight nine. Um, and they, you can Google us um, on on Google and then uh, DoorDash right now. Yeah. It's the best way to order. What's your social? Social, social media? is uh, the Drunken Burger Edge at uh, Instagram. All right, so, so yeah, that's our name. Yeah. The, the, Drunken the Drunken Burger. Burger. I need I need marketing help. So if you so <laughs> if any of you out there, yeah, we're 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 definitely gonna be there for you. Up uh, guys, check link. You know everything will be in the description below. Check that out. Every all the information on Donnie, uh, and the Drunken Burger, the Soup Boys. Everything will have all that for you. Uh, check them out. Follow them. Order some. I mean, the food is actually really good. I wouldn't just say that. I tried it. It's awesome. I'm actually we're about to order some more here. Definitely go ahead and subscribe. Follow the channel. Uh, get with Donnie on 
any given day. He's here every day. But guess what? He's super busy. <laughs> and he's I think he's worked nothing nothing short of 60 to 70 hours this week. So fast four, fast four, days. Fast four days. So this was what comes with business, guys. And, you know, Donnie's a, a pure example of that. And he's a really good guy cares about the quality of his food, cares about his customers, even cares about, I mean, I've dealt with, I've been dealing with him and it's been an amazing experience with him and I'm happy for him. I'm, I'm really, really happy for him. I love the location, love the spot and it's been great. So we'll definitely catch you guys on another, another one, man. Donnie, I really appreciate Thank you coming you. out, man. Yeah. So we're definitely going to be back, man. You guys, you guys take it easy, you know, easy. but we're out. Yeah. You got to eat.